every negative comment that I see, I laugh at, you know, when it comes to me. Like, it really has no effect to me. Uh, honestly, you know, what I don't like is the people around me, them being like, hmm. come at for that hurts me a lot, you know? Hey family, a quick one. Over 87% of you are consuming this content every single week but are not subscribed. That means you are enjoying the growth conversations but you are not liking, you are not subscribing and you are not sharing it with others. So please, I plead with you, please subscribe so that you can share the love, you can share the growth and you can share this wonderful platform and wonderful safe space with others as well. Enjoy the episode. Okay, I'll get into this because uh, it's something that the audience definitely wants to know about. There, in, in our lives, um, myself included, we value family, yeah. we value friendships, relationships. Those essentially are the core of who we are and why we operate and why we live. Mm. I know we have careers that we build in order to make money and also to fulfill our purposes. But in building those careers, it's important that at our core, we remain grounded. Yes. We remain humble and we remain accountable to the people that we love. Mm -hmm. um, you went on TV and it seemed like you're no longer accountable to the people that you love. They saw a side of you that perhaps they didn't know. Um, you might have neglected a relationship that was important to you. And unfortunately, you didn't have access to social media, but it seemed like you were being dragged, you were being reprimanded on social media for changing who you are to fit in into the, into the format of the show. To the extent that we were like, why is this man falling in love on TV when we know that he's in love in real life? Mm -hmm. Do you believe that for your career, you neglected the important things such as your romantic relationship? Uh, just the romantic relationship specifically? We'll, we'll get onto the other stuff, or... things. Do you believe specifically that you neglected such important things like your romantic relationship oh, for the career? Oh, okay, okay. I hear your question now. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Um, in terms of that, man, I think I've made it clear in previous interviews that um, I don't really want to get into that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's something that I don't want to speak about. I feel like I've spoken about it enough. Mm -hmm. And if you followed my journey, you'll get to understand who I am, mm -hmm. why I made the decision that I made, and how I feel about them, you know, so... Are you happy with your decisions? In general or with this specific... Or... With your decisions in general and who you are at the moment? Oh, yes, definitely, cool. definitely, you know, because cool. I feel like whichever decision that you make in life contributes to who you are, you know. Sure. There's certain things that you have to go through as a person to yeah. propel you to becoming a better version sure. of yourself, you know, so everything that I went through, everything that I've done, you know, it was, I believe it was supposed to happen. Like yeah. it, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm someone yeah. that believes in whatever happens will happen, you know, so, yeah. It's also important to note that that specific aspect of your life is your private life. Yeah. And you'd like to keep your private life private. Yeah, yeah. And it's important to maintain a private life in this area that you're in where exactly. everything, everybody wants to know, everybody wants to peace, everybody just mm -hmm. wants to be involved, everybody believes they have the rights, they're entitled to, yeah. to, to, to your life. No, definitely, I agree with that, man. Yeah. And especially for things that mean a lot to you, mm -hmm. it's important to protect the things that mean a lot to you and keep them private and keep them to yourself and to just make sure you nurture them, you know? Because uh, ah, stepping into this light and in this industry, it's the big bad world, you mm -hmm. know? There's a lot, a um, lot of opinion, a lot of aspersions that are cost and everything. So I feel like it's, if, if you want to protect what you love, you're going to keep it away from everything. Correct. Do you without the particular person let's move on from that but as a concept mm -hmm. as an ideal as a principle that you believe in do you believe in love yes definitely yeah. definitely i think in my background and my upbringing i was raised in so much love mm -hmm. you know and that i exude love you know i think a lot of people what i've seen actually on socials ever since i came out of the show is that people could really see that yeah. of me you know yeah. everyone was like 
this guy's just full of love, you know, yeah. and it's it's not like I'm pretending or acting. Yeah. When I went to that show, the, everything that I did was like 100% me, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. You cannot pretend for three months, yeah. I, I believe, you know, <laughs> as too much. Some as tried. Much. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. maybe some did try. I, yeah. it's, they, it's up to them, I don't know, but like for me, um, I, I just, was just myself the entire time, and yeah. I'm just someone that just filled with love. And I believe that the world, man, like needs a whole lot of love, you know. What's the best container for love for you for the season? Um, B. Young Temple sat on that chair um, in, in December last year and he has been divorced and he opened up to us about his divorce. And I asked him if he'd get married again. And he said, two years ago, I'd say yes, but now no. And I said, why? He, and he made an analogy that um, he took the glass of water and he said, in this glass of water, there's the glass and there's the water. Mm-hmm. And what's more important, I said, it's the water because the water is life giving. Yeah. So he said, whatever container you choose to put love in, it's up to you. But as long oh, as wow. there's love. Oh wow, that's that's a beautiful analogy. But yeah, she's actually. What would be my container for love right now? I think it would be just the relationships that I have around me. Sure. You know, the people that I keep around me. You mm-hmm. know, stepping into this period of my life has been the one of the most rewarding moments but the most difficult moments in terms of adjusting i mean i've been isolated f- from the rest of the world for a long time mm-hmm. and you come out and there's just so many things that are happening you know and the relationships that i have around me have been that container for me in terms of helping me readjust and get back to my reality and getting back to who i am yeah you know yeah. It, it's been very very helpful so i'd say my container for love right now is definitely the relationships around me that's fair that's fair um a lot of a lot of Rather, something beautiful that I witnessed. Um, my audience didn't know this. I'm a big fan of Big Brother. So really? I, watched, I watched it religiously. Oh, man. Um, especially this season. So I know a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, something beautiful that happened. We live in a country where black men are vilified for not being great fathers. But mm-hmm. we saw a moment where your dad walked oh, into that house man. and exuded love. Yeah. He showed poise. He showed... Man, Uguba Indota, young and bella. He showed being a man of substance, a man who knows what it is to be a leader mm. and has raised his kids with that level of leadership and, and, and principles and that guidance. What does it mean to have a father like the father you have to you? Man, I'm getting emotionally <laughs> hearing you speak about it. That man has, has been the most amazing person in my life. He's played an extremely pivotal role in my life. Mm. When I think about it, even since I was a kid, He's just always been there, you know, always there holding my hand. My first rugby game, he was there. My first hockey game. Most of my games that I played, he was there, you know. He's just always been a pillar of strength for me, mm, you know. Mm, um, mm. Even when, you know, most as I'm close, I see Ruga, you know. Mm-hmm. Even then, you know, he was just there for me the whole time. He, he did something that fathers don't usually do. He spent, I think, my first week that I spent there, he spent every night there sleeping with me. You know? Wow. Yeah, he's that kind of guy and he doesn't pretend he's just I think for him it's because of his background and how mm-hmm. he grew up, mm-hmm. you know, his parents divorced and he grew up in a very he had a very rough upbringing mm-hmm. and he just told himself that I don't even want to want my kids to go through this and he just rectified the errors. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I yeah. feel like maybe him expressing love like that and compassion and just support is him just making sure that he doesn't want to repeat the mistakes that happened in his family growing up. So, yeah. But he could have chosen to say, ah, I was raised badly, so I don't know any better. Why do you think rectifying the mistakes was the option? Because there really are people yeah. who choose to dwell in their circumstances. That's so true. Yeah. And I think it's all with the mentality of the person. Because in any situation, when something bad happens, you could just choose to give up and be like, ah, you know what? I'm just, I'm, I already come from a poor background. My parents are just terrible towards me. My family hates me. Let me just put that out there into the world. Mm, you know? mm, but mm. I think for him, he went through it and he was like, this is not nice, you know? I, I wouldn't want my family to go through this. And when I speak to him, he said he set goals for himself. And mm-hmm. he's like, I at least want to have a home one day. I mm-hmm. want to have a car. Mm-hmm. I want to have a wife. I want to have kids, you mm-hmm. know? And he's mm-hmm. like, nothing ever deterred him from that, you know? Because um, he's actually from Gautenga, so he told Really? He had to kloof, <laughs> yeah. to kloof, and then they relocated to the Eastern Cape of okay. Tanzania. You know, and he was just like, I do not want to live the life that I, I lived. Sure. I want better for myself and for my kids one day. So it's, I think it's just a mentality. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you also grow up in Tanzania your whole life? No, no, no. So me, I grab it, be sure. Okay. It's, it's not too far from Tanzania. Yeah, Maybe yeah, like yeah. 40 minutes away. It's actually the capital city of the Eastern Cape. Lol. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> that condition, wow. I, I know. And the capital, um, that's where the parliament is and yeah. legislature is and everything. Um, so, yeah, I grew up at Bishaw sure, for a number of years. Then we later relocated to where God, like King Williamstown, yeah. which is literally like, what, maybe six minutes away. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, all my life I grew up there, lived there. I was born and raised there, man. Mm-hmm. Usnai is who is mm-hmm. because of that whole place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, 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 high school, you go to high school in Kings Williamstown as well. Yes. Hence the rugby element. Yes, 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 yes. What does rugby teach you as a person? Because sports is so pivotal, I, yeah. I feel, especially in those teenage years, yeah. um, having that extracurricular activity that, that you do, mm. there's something that it does in you, teaching you discipline and things yes. like that. Yeah, you said it hit the uh, nail on yeah. the head with that. In terms of discipline, rugby, in as much as it's a rough game, it mm. really is a gentleman sport. Okay. The respect that is that each and every single rugby player has is insane. Mm-hmm. You know, you have respect for the game, respect for your opponent, respect for the referee your supporters, everyone. It just teaches you respect. Um, but with rugby, though, I had to stop playing rugby, you know, uh, for a minute. When I was when I was a kid, I couldn't play rugby um, because so I'm Seventh-day Adventist. Okay. Right? So I, I, I wouldn't... Church is on Saturday. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. So my parents... All the games are on Saturday. On Saturday. <laughs> so I had to stop playing rugby yeah. and I went for hockey because hockey was played on Friday. So mm-hmm. my parents are like, okay, you can play that sport. It's fine. So I was more of a hockey boy growing Mm -hmm. up, right up until varsity even. Mm -hmm. I played for my university as well. So hockey has just always been my thing rather rather than rugby. But I love rugby. You know, as as a person that grew up in Eastern Cape and I went to the school that I went to, it's nearly impossible to not love Which school was it? Dale College. Dale College. Yes, 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 actually, yes of course. Have, we have the most black spring box. Uh, really? Yeah, more than any That's other awesome. school in the That's country. Awesome, man. Yeah. So growing up in a culture like that that just loves rugby, is passionate about rugby. I think me being a lover of sports was just almost inevitable. Hence, I went down this path that I'm going on, mm, which is mm. like a sports broadcaster and presenter and whatnot, you know. So that's where the passion started. It's, it's interesting, um, pivoting back to your dad, not having much, to your dad being able to take you to a Dale College. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, um, how does a Dale College then morph you into being a young man um, like who you are? Because those schools, there is... <sighs> undertones right Mm -hmm. of Mm anti-black undertones i don't want to use the r word but there's undertones of being anti-black right Mm -hmm. we i went to the same school i went to george campbell in 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 kzn oh oh, okay um and there uh, we we almost have to work 10 times harder to fit in (laughs) into certain spaces and to be acknowledged um did you also feel like when you were in that school that hey so now you need to push harder you need to push harder for Mm -hmm. that acceptance or did it was it a time when you went to school it was like ah we all feel equal now yeah yeah i think for me the time that we went to school because my school at the era was it went through a shift because mm-hmm. before i think my era like a long time actually it was predominantly white and okay. it, it was just a shift where the school just became predominantly black so okay. my school okay. is just literally known for black excellence you okay, know? okay. So i, I, I yeah. didn't really feel the pressure of i need yeah. to do extra yeah. you know whatnot because i look to my left if someone that looks like me i look to the right someone that looks like me and it's just majority of the people in the class it was like just predominantly black mm-hmm. so i never went through that yes the educators and whatnot i wouldn't say they were predominantly black you know um but i never really felt that pressure of maybe having to overextend myself to be at a certain level do you think your life would have worked out differently if your dad was absent definitely Mm -hmm. i do i do like i said he played a very pivotal role in my life you know um lord knows who i'd be or what i'd be doing if he wasn't there for me you know um, cause I, I really do believe that the, the guidance of a father is very important in hmm. a son's life. You know? hmm. And that's what I'm going to do as well. When I yeah. have a kid, one yeah. day, you know, yeah. I want to make sure that as much as my dad was present, I want to be even more present, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, cause obviously as a parent, you make mistakes, you know, um, no parent is perfect. I want to learn from his mistakes that he made, you know, and make sure that I, I, I capitalize on that and I raise my child as best as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Friendships in yeah. the Big Brother house, are they real? The ones that I formed, definitely. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm still friends. Ducky, for example. Yeah. Uh, the other day, I had dinner with his family and my family. You know, my parents were in Joburg. They came. We went over to his house. We had dinner. 
I think it was even the third or fourth time I was going over to his house to have lunch or dinner. His dad even yeah. said, um, I think you should just move in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, he, I, ma- I made a friend there. I made a good yeah, friend. I made a yeah. brother. Which is very rare, I believe, in a, in a situation like that. Correct, because it's a competitive situation. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard, like, finding someone who you sure. really have, like, a genuine connection with. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely a friendship that stands out for me from being in the house. Um, the reason I ask that is because I love that you mentioned um, Ducky specifically Mm -hmm. because uh, once again I watched the show and there was a point where you irritated me because I was like you are fixated on this Ducky person and you are not (laughs) concentrating on playing your game to an extent where I think it shook you when when Mitch spoke about you're a gossiper Mm -hmm. because really that's what the cameras were showing you doing all the time Death. There was a, there was a good two weeks where Sinai was gossiping all the time, oh and it was like it's a camera thing, it's mm. a production thing where you being because the cameras could be on anybody else, yeah. but you and Ducky would have a three minutes conversation. We on you. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you really looked like that on the outside. It was like, Damn. geez, this guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Man. So it's, it's nice that you're saying that you guys are actually forming a genuine friendship. Yeah. And in genuine friendships, we talk about people and things. Yeah. Yeah. Also on that though, you're very limited in the things that you can speak about when you're in the house. Correct. Like you're very limited. Yeah. You speak about. Uh, I remember there was a point where we were speaking about artists, music, and whatnot. And you can't drift too much mm-hmm. on that, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so you kind of have to speak about what's happening inside the house, this person and that person. So very, very limited in the things that correct, we speak correct. About. And it, it ends up comes across as gossiping because yeah, yeah. if you can't speak about brands, if you can't speak about yes. uh, artists, it's like okay, what, <laughs> what yes, left? You're very limited. Yeah, you understand. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was, I was oh, that. That gossip thing really shit me. <laughs> it <actually>. did. <laughs> I was not okay. I think, it was, I think it was Lawrence who brought it up. First. Yeah, yeah. I was like, and then you brought it up again. <laughs> back to back. I'm like, this guy's coming for me. You know. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, Dougie's like a really good friend of mine. Mm. I think that that bond helped me keep myself sane a lot in mm, that house. Mm, you know, mm. I, without him, I don't know how my journey would have been. I don't think it would have been the same. You know. But yeah, he was he, he was a brother to me on the inside, and even now on the outside, he's still a brother to me. Not regrets, but any mistakes that you think you did in the house that you could have uh, done better? Definitely, definitely yeah. not holding back a lot in the first You did. Week. You I did. held back a lot. Yeah. You know, I was overthinking a lot. Now mm-hmm. that I'm post-show, I'm like, there was no need for me to overthink in certain mm-hmm. situations. I could have just lived in the moment from the beginning, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. not just think about things too much, you know. That's definitely the only thing for me where I was like, ah, I could have just let loose. Because towards the end, I was just really relaxed, comfortable, and myself, and people could like really see sides of me that they didn't see apparently like the first i don't know six weeks maybe definitely you know so definitely. Uh, yeah that's definitely something that i know i could have done differently you we there was even oof, dare i say you because uh, people who watch big brother have been watching it since early 2000s while it was still big brother africa so their expectation there's early viewers and then these these new viewers yeah. the people like us who've been watching it since back then mm-hmm. um we used to people day two there's fights <laughs> yeah. we're here to watch television yeah. we're not here to watch people sense mm-hmm. what's going on do you know what i mean so definitely that's why it came across as low-key people thinking he's boring but when those weeks six seven eight nine ten when you came out of that shell mm-hmm. and you were confident in who you are and you were showing us your personality i think it it, it resonates with the, the 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 audience that you've built now i mean the yeah. snipers yeah which is what your your your, your community is called yes. is a community of people who saw it before we did mm. because they definitely saw the character um they saw the the the, the um, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah no definitely man i think for me it's because i'm i'm a big thinker you know i, I before i do any 